Family planning allows ladies to enjoy a healthy, active sex life without having to worry about a ticking biological clock. So, let's talk about having kids on your own damn terms. Oh, and plenty of sex in the meantime. Make it stop! I'm joined by our lady parts expert, OBGYN Dr. Sherry, and today's guests, Courtney and Chloe Kardashian. Hi guys! Hi! That fire behind you looks really cozy. It and... is, and I actually have a blanket on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys ready to talk about family planning, sex, birth control, all of that stuff? Let's get into it. Being able to choose when, how, and with whom you reproduce is an incredible thing. So first, let's talk about the magic of making the babies and then the family planning. When you were younger and you were taught about sex, like either in sex ed or your mom or what have you, were you taught that sex was for pleasure? I feel like Courtney and I have two totally different memories of our experiences with my mom. I remember my mom talking to me about sex and Court, I don't think you had that experience, but I also had the blessing of having two older sisters. So I was able to either hear their stories while they were having girl talk while I'm like spying on them. But I don't think it was really about pleasure. I just think it was something that it's just a natural progression that you do in life. I think when you're younger, it's so much about focusing on somebody else are you doing something good enough for somebody else it's more so pleasing your partner which is also okay but i, I definitely think it was less about the focus on pleasing me mm -hmm. i think it was also a lot about you know someone that you love like making sure that it's like with someone that you love and chloe and i have different memories we're only five years apart but we were always told like you don't have sex until you're married it wasn't even like an option <laughs> I got on birth control when I was 15 because I knew that I should for certain and obvious reasons. But how did you guys learn about it? When did you realize that like, this is something that I really need to pay attention to and educate myself on? I started taking birth control at 14 or 15. And I told my mom that I was, I just told her. I think I had it easier because of Courtney and Kim. It's like you know, when you're the third child, they've already heard it all. And I think the shock of their daughters having sex before marriage has already gone out the window. So I was so afraid of getting pregnant. I mean, my parents scared shit out of me and would show me like, this is herpes and would show me photos of like, I remember my mom made me look at all. Oh my God, I had to look at all these visuals. And if I had sex, this is what was going to happen to me. And so I was so afraid. She took me to the doctor. We got birth control pills. And then I remember feeling a lot safer because I was, I didn't want to be a teen mom. I didn't want to get pregnant before I was ready to really get pregnant and understand those responsibilities fully. Are there ways to help prevent pregnancy if the condom breaks or someone forgets to take a few birth control pills in a row? Plan B emergency contraception is a reliable backup option to help prevent pregnancy before it even starts. There's no long-term effects after taking it, and it won't affect your ability to get pregnant in the future. Take it within 72 hours after unprotected sex, and the sooner you take it, the better it works. Was there an age that you had in your head when you were younger, like this is the time that I wanna start having kids and stuff? I know people that are like, when I'm 24, I'll have a baby, and I was always like, when I'm 30, that's when I'm gonna start. But what about you guys? I never thought about it. I was never that girl who was like, I'm gonna get married and I'm gonna have kids. Like I just didn't really think about it. And then at 30, I just got pregnant. And so that was it. I was like, I've never been pregnant before. I'm 30, I feel like it's, it's meant to be. Court our whole life was never a girl that dreamt about, she never had like a fairy tale wedding or just a family plan like that. And I actually really sort of admire that. And I admire you, Sarah, saying at 30, I think 30 is a beautiful age to start because you get to live out your 20s and you get to really experience life. 
I got married at 24. We tried to have kids. I went through IVF. I did all of this crazy stuff and the pressure of the instant you get married, okay, where are the kids? When are you having kids? And I really wanted to enjoy being married for a minute and I was 24. Like in hindsight, I'm like, I can't even believe I was married at 24. It's yeah. so young. Baby. After nine days of knowing someone. No, no, no. I got married after nine days of being engaged. I knew him for 30 days. Okay. Get it right. Okay. There's a difference. The best biologic time to have babies is in your early 20s. May not be the most realistic because the most what? realistic. Yeah, it's the best. Your body is in perfect form in your early 20s and your eggs are perfection. But the most realistic time to get pregnant is really when a woman knows who she is, has really picked her life partner and has a satisfying career. And that's usually in your early 30s. Yeah, not when you're like in college and leaving the frat dorms with like a 40 in your hand at 9 a.m. and your heels in the other. <laughs> like, that's not the time that you should be having children. If your best time biologically is when you're in your early 20s, when is the best time time for you to freeze your eggs or embryos. Yeah, the best time is really in your early 30s. 31 to 38 is the ideal window for egg freezing. Courtney, with Penelope and Rain, did you plan with them? And once you had Mason, was everything just smooth sailing after that? I am not a big planner. So <laughs> I didn't have any plans of like, I'm going to breastfeed and I'm going to do this and I'm going to sleep train or I'm gonna, like, I didn't have any plans. And I remember I said to my mom, whenever she would ask me questions, like the walls aren't painted and you need to get this and you need to do this. And I was like, people had babies in caves at one point. Like if I have nothing, if I don't even have a diaper, like I'll still be okay, you know? And yeah. like, I- Not it, a diaper, oh my God. Well, I had diapers, I had a changing Thank God. Table. I had a crib, I had all the stuff. I had all the things that you think you need, but then Mason ended up sleeping with me in my bed. And then I started co-sleeping and I did that with Penelope as well. And then I tried it a little differently with Rain, but I slept in his room. But I just think like, I don't know, I didn't have any plans of how I was gonna do things. I just did what felt really naturally to me. I think it's so important that you do that very instinctually and that's that's better than trying to be controlling <laughs> and it's more natural and I think you know the kids the babies really pick up on that so I, I applaud you for that thank you do you think um, with it being so natural came from having so many siblings no because I really didn't help with <laughs> with my <laughs> I did help with Kendall, like I would babysit Kendall. In the summers, I would work for my mom and I would be her assistant. And so sometimes my job would be like watching Kendall. So I did watch them, but I had no real like motherly, just I didn't have that inside of me until I got pregnant and had my own kids. I was super calm. It just felt, it, when I first found out I was pregnant, I wasn't, but then as it went on, I was like super calm and went with the flow. We're all so different in how we do parent and I'm incredibly structured. My daughter's sleep trained, we're on a schedule and I am like, that's just my personality. But to see everyone be so different, it's really awesome because you get to take little bits and pieces from each one. I was just a student watching them all teach me, I guess. Gosh, I, I've never wanted sisters more in my life until right now. <laughs> I, I agree. I feel like Chloe could also see our mistakes too and maybe be like, okay, that's not for me. Courtney, your kids were up until like wild hours, like, or, you know, whatever things that are okay for us, like she could see through our experiences, like that's not okay for her. You were the trial by tribulation and, and, and you were the observer being like, oh yeah, hell no, I'm not doing that in the future. Yeah. <laughs> At least one of us here is a planner and that's Chloe. Yeah. <laughs> Have you made more plans other than just sleeping schedules? Have you thought about freezing your eggs? And might I be so bold as to ask, do you want your daughter to have siblings in the future and spacing them out? Spacing them out, like I'm talking about blocks and not actually. Yeah, no, games. I get it. I totally get it. So I actually have done 
IVF about three different times. I froze my eggs once already. And when I was ready to make embryos um, with Tristan, I was making embryos, which is something that I think the world should know. Freezing your eggs, of course, is a great insurance policy, if you will. You know they're there. I had about 12 or 14 eggs, I can't really remember, and I defrosted them all to mix with sperm. None of them survived. So all of them, I don't know if the word is died. I can't, I don't know that word. Like Dr. Sherry, I'm sure, would know. And so I'm so grateful that I decided to make embryos I'm 36, but as young as I am, instead of what if I was 40 and then my eggs aren't as healthy, so then I had to do IVF again to mm -hmm. make embryos. And then we realized that my eggs aren't strong enough to be frozen. They should be mixed immediately with sperm to make embryos. So I actually have made embryos. And then, you know, with COVID, finding this whole fertility process, if you do need assistance in fertility, it's much more challenging during mm -hmm. COVID, mm. but you know, they say, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And so the one time that I'm actually <laughs> really trying to plan, God is saying, uh-uh, you can't make your plans like this. But you know what? I have to say that during the COVID time, infertility was kind of shut down because they were calling it an elective process. They weren't allowing IVF, they weren't allowing egg freezing. My plan was to have kids closer in age, but now with COVID and everything, my plan's been a little delayed, but I definitely do want more kids. I have so many brothers and sisters. I think it's such a blessing, especially during these times to have a family member or people that you can play with and rely on and just have a buddy through life. Yeah, to put your uh, anxieties at ease, my brother and I are four or five years apart and we have a great relationship. That makes me feel so much better. And you and I are five years apart. Don't ever forget it, Chloe. I know, you're right, Cor. So Dr. Sherry, with women going through the egg freezing process, if you have a specific partner in mind, do you recommend creating embryos over just freezing your eggs? Well, you know, there was a time that it was better that embryos were a lot more sturdy to freeze. Um, and that was the preference. But now with the, you know, sort of high tech and the flash freezing that's being done, the defrost rate of an frozen egg and a frozen embryo are the same. I froze mine too. And you did? Hopefully they're sitting there okay, just for, you never know. Look at the spontaneous mom planning her life. I really got talked into it. I was gonna say it, it wasn't an easy thing to convince her to do that. <laughs> I was really convinced, but I was like, okay, whatever, I'll do it one time. Since everyone else is doing it, I might as well. It's like peer pressure yeah. with freezing your eggs. Everyone's <laughs> doing it. It's so great. And you know, how you detect a healthy, viable egg, you know, really is gonna depend on your age and your ovarian reserve. So the number of eggs that you have and the quality. So how old were you, Courtney, when you froze your eggs? I believe I was 39. Okay. Top That's... notch, top tier. <laughs> Did freezing your eggs or freezing embryos, did that make you feel empowered for having control over your own body and being able to enjoy sex and like taking the pressure off of having children immediately? I think it gave me a feeling of like taking a deep breath. You know, I was 39 and I was about to turn 40. And so I just felt like, okay, everyone was like, are you, if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it now. And so I think just having that like, okay, everyone stop rushing me. I don't even know if I, want to have another kid or if that's like in the future or whatever. So just, I think doing that, like, and like you said, like having the control over my body, I think it just gave me like a, like peace of mind. What about you, Chloe? The same thing. I feel like once I had true, everyone was pressuring me to have another kid and my circumstances were a little different. And I just was like, I don't know if I want to have more kids right now. I, I was so enjoying my daughter and it was, it's overwhelming. You're going from, and I, I love, love, love kids, but you're going from not being responsible for another human being but yourself, which is even a challenge to take care of yeah. yourself. And now you have to take care of somebody else and then still figure out work and family and all of this stuff. So I think it takes a minute. For me, I'm such an overthinker and a planner. I'm like the state of the world. This world is like, I think all these other things, it's crazy. And then what happens if I die? I'm leaving these kids here alone. Who's gonna take care of them? Like I'm thinking, I, I think so far ahead. <laughs>
And that scares me too. They're not going to be on a schedule if you take care of You're them. Not like, I <laughs> schedule. Midnight, we're going to have pillow fights and dance parties. Do it before eight. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's just like a, an insurance policy. It's there. I have that sense of insurance knowing that this is always here if I want it and need it. And it's, it just, yeah, it's a sense of relief, I guess. I want to know, because you said it was a process to get Courtney to actually freeze her eggs. I want to know a little bit about the behind the scenes. I'm picturing like almost intervention style and everyone's pointing, saying like, freeze your eggs and stuff. Freeze your eggs. Freeze your eggs. Freeze your eggs. Freeze your eggs. (laughs) (laughs) I can't remember. Can you, Chloe? Oh my gosh, it would be mom texting you probably once a week. When are you doing this? You're gonna be 40 and like the daunting, you're gonna be 40. Like that means your life is over. Yeah. I feel like mom or everyone just like kind of bullying you into it. And I was like, guys, you got one shot. After I did it, the doctor was like, I'd love you to do one more round just to like have a a good healthy batch and like a, a good amount. And I was like, you guys have me one time, that's it. Like, that's more than I was going to do. I'm like someone, I'm like, what's God's plan? Like, am I supposed to get pregnant on my own at 41? Like, maybe that's God's plan. Like, I'm more like that. That's, I think, why I never really did, like, the planning. Courtney's a very, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. It's God's gift, that fly by the seat of her pants. She's so, like... (laughs) This is Courtney. I live in a Disney world. Just talking to birds and mice. Yeah. Yeah. I (laughs) love that. I think it's so great that both of you are being so honest about egg freezing because egg freezing should now be part of the conversation about birth control. Every woman should be talking about Mm -hmm. it. This is going to help so many women be so much more uh, emboldened to go ahead and try it or talk to their doctor about it. I also think that like, employers should pay for egg freezing. And some companies do, but I'm just putting it out there that I really think, you know, women have to make this decision between career and having a family so often. And sometimes women aren't able to afford the egg freezing process. It's really expensive. So I really think that employers should cover that. And that's my political spiel for the day. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here and being so open and candid about fertility and sex and the joy of sisterhood and learning from a big sister of what not to do with your kids. Yeah. Yeah. Or what to do. Or exactly what to do. (laughs) Thank you so much, guys. Thank you guys so much. It was nice talking to you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I think everyone out there has a lot of questions around freezing eggs and family planning. So let's do some rapid fire questions with Dr. Sherry. Is there an ideal time to start trying to get pregnant? It's best to get pregnant when you and your partner are ready and ideally in your early 30s. At what time after your first child can you start trying for a second? There's no hard fast rule, but it's best to wait at least 12 to 18 months before having your second pregnancy. So what are the side effects of the hormones you take to produce extra eggs for egg harvesting? The most common side effects from egg harvesting are going to be uterine cramping, pelvic pain, weight gain, bloating, mood swings, but the good news is there's no long-term effects to you or the baby. And how long do frozen eggs last? Frozen eggs can last up to 10 years. What makes an egg viable? A healthy, viable egg is gonna be based on its size and its quality, and this was often determined by the embryologist who is the person that's gonna be assessing what eggs are frozen and which ones are not. And how many should you expect to get when you harvest? This is really gonna depend on your age, but ideally you would like to harvest at least 10 to 20. That would be considered a healthy batch. Is there a chance I could wind up with someone else's eggs by accident? I feel like that is the ultimate soap opera storyline. I've heard these horror stories in the past, but make sure you educate yourself and find a verified egg freezing infertility clinic to make sure that does not happen. And uh, this is the big one. How much does it cost? Egg freezing can cost anywhere from 12 to 20,000 per cycle. Storage costs can be up to $1,200 um, a year. Thank you so much, Courtney and Chloe, and of course, Dr. Sherry for joining me. Tune in next week for a conversation on the joy of sex and the many, many ways to have it.
I know at least six. 